And so on that note, this note of explainability, that ties into ideas of ethical AI. And you have a section on ethical AI in your book. So why, why is that important? Why not just, why not just tell us how to do everything? <laughs> why is it important to talk about the ethics as well? Yeah, so, so the way I put it in the book, right? Uh, I, I, even in the introduction, I have a question about is deep learning dangerous? And, and you talked about artificial general intelligence. And, and often those are the kind of scenarios that uh, have gotten a lot of attention that what's going to happen in the future when the machines take over. And, and that's certainly something to worry about uh, if and when that happens. But I think we already have a problem today with how uh, mm-hmm. these algorithms can cause harm uh, in society. And, and that's really what ethical AI is about. Uh, to ensure that as we develop and build these systems, that we do it in a responsible way uh, that doesn't cause harm. And, and I think, uh, at, at least for myself, that was a blind spot for a long time. Uh, like I, You pick up a uh, introductory book on the topic and and they don't really talk about these things and i realized that well that's not good so i i should at least try to open the eyes to people a little bit right so that they they know that this is this is important Uh, and uh, there's been a lot of examples where uh, where the systems aren't well the the people who designed the systems might not have thought through these things or it might be that uh, they are used for things that they shouldn't be used for. So the prime example, right? You have a facial recognition system, maybe used by law enforcement, uh, and uh, it was uh, developed with uh, photographs of people of a certain ethnicity, for example, and they claim to be 99% accurate and stuff. And then you uh, mm-hmm. deploy it out in the wild, and you have a 60% accuracy for uh, uh, other groups of people, and, and that's just mm-hmm. not acceptable. Yep. Yep. Agreed. I think that in the last few years, rightly so, and belatedly, it has become mainstream within data science, within data modeling, to be thoughtful about the real world applications. I think that prior to a few years ago, it was standard to not reflect on this, like you say, in books that come out or papers that come out. And I think that a minority of books in the future will ignore these considerations entirely. Um, And I think, you know, a lot of us come from technical backgrounds. And so we are, we're aware, if we understand how these algorithms work under the hood, we know that it's, it is linear algebra and calculus and what could be biased about math. But of course, the training data that we use to train our models is almost always um, it, it's data that's some produ- kind of bias. data yeah. produced by humans often, right? So that it contains a yeah. lot of human biases. And, uh, yeah. So yeah. So I, I also um, found it great. It's very interesting when I was uh, doing the research to write on those topics, right? That I had to find the different publications, and it has been great work done in this field, uh, uh, primarily by women, actually, uh, which is interesting. Uh, because uh, it's not that uh, many women in uh, in data science, I think, or uh, probably if you if you look at it, uh, uh, they're probably a minority. Uh, but and likely they have seen the uh, the harm being caused, and that that has mm-hmm. made them pay attention uh, more, perhaps than males. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. it's just These, interesting. So yeah. These algorithms have historically been developed by, um, by yeah, by white men, by uh, the historically dominant uh, group, and uh, so yeah, we're just not. I mean, for people who aren't uh, watching the video version, both Magnus and I happen to be white men. Yep, and uh, uh, yeah, we. Yeah, we, we, we enjoy uh, privileges and opportunities that uh, others might not get as easily. And 
And part of that probably also leads us as a group to not be thoughtful about ways that the algorithms that we develop are impacting all of the users. And um, yeah, so we have lots of examples in hardware examples, software examples where tools are designed for white men by white men. Like yep. it's, it's everywhere, like tools, uh, seats on public transport, um, and machine learning algorithms there. It's like, as you design these things, instead of putting together a, you know, putting the effort in to find a set of users that represents the variety of users that you're going to have in the real world, you just look around the lab or whatever and say, all right, I need three people. <laughs> and all of those three people are white men. And then all these different devices end up being, um, yeah. Well and I mean, it, it, it's, not, it's not, often yeah. not consciously, right? You, you're looking at what we yeah, have available yeah, yeah. And, and getting data isn't that easy. So you, you're looking at data around you and uh, yeah. getting a representative set of data for the entire world is, is hard, but uh, you need to put in that effort because otherwise you're not going to yeah. build good systems. Yeah, it's worth the investment. And uh, the most valuable firm on the planet, Apple, uh, has been longer than uh, its big tech competitors. Um, yeah, had a, had a focus on this kind of, so when Apple develops a facial recognition system, they were putting, even years ago, putting the effort into um, to pay to bring in models with a wide variety of faces that represented the faces that they would need their device to work. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, um, yeah. Some a competitor of theirs might develop their facial recognition recognition system based on images that they just pull from the internet, which are not as balanced. And um, anyway, so yeah, so um, yeah, I'm glad that you yeah, that you brought this up in your book, and um, yeah, it's nice to to have a conversation about it. And everybody out there should be should be thinking about how your algorithm is going to impact people in the real world, and what else you can be doing to ensure that the that the outputs uh, so if your algorithm uh, is making a difference in people's lives in some way, which probably most algorithms are, if there's some way for you to test whether uh, different demographic groups are equally uh, affected by the algorithm, you should you should try to do that.